Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are or whenever you're viewing this. I want to welcome you to the first of what will be a video series with Impeco, uh, a bit of a, a insight to the Impeco automation, uh, our products, how we conduct our process, uh, things of that nature. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that all of you could join us. Um, my name is Tommy Dyer. I am the Vice President of Sales for both North America and Latin America. And uh, joining me today is Francesco Parodi. Francesco. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Tommy. I'm Francesco Parodi. I'm the Global TLA Product Manager in Impeco, and my main role is to manage the product roadmap in Impeco, priority assessing new products, feasibility, and so on. So happy to join, and I leave you the word, Tommy, to start. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Appreciate that, Francesco. So what we wanted to do today is let's say start from the beginning, right? If you're not a current automation customer, or even if you are, I want to give you insight to the Impeco process, what we have learned over 30 plus years in the laboratory automation market to be the best way to finding the correct and most efficient solution for your laboratory from an automation perspective. Um, we start a lot by, let's say, having a, a mutual conversation about what your needs are, what you're trying to accomplish in the future with automation. What are your current, we'll call them pain points inside of your laboratory, whether it be lack of staffing, whether it be need to meet certain metrics, turnaround times, things of that nature. We wanna understand those, those items that you're dealing with and then find a way for our solution to best fit your needs. And we start with, uh, we'll call it a, a basic interview process where we're going through a document to better understand the finite points of the workflow. That could be two volume, throughput, metrics around turnaround time, need for stat management. Let's say if it is a current automation uh, that's in your laboratory, what are the things that you would like to see uh, in a future state with the automation based off of your current experience. So we take that time at the beginning of the process really to not only forge a relationship, but to better understand your needs as well as better explain our solutions. Uh, Inpeco has been in the market, like I said earlier, for 30 plus years. We have developed many, many solutions across many, many, let's say areas of laboratory workflow, centrification modules, sample integrity modules, storage and retrieval, from the pre-analytic through the analytic to the post-analytic. We are an open automation vendor, meaning we are vendor agnostic, and we want to understand where are you going for the next, not only one to two to three years, but five years and 10 years. When we look at, at modeling a solution for you, we're looking at the growth that you expect to see. And we're accounting for that at the beginning of our process. Uh, usually with, with the interview process, we'll call it, we're determining between ourselves, you, the customer, the client, and our solution consultants, what's the path to the best success for both organizations. When we have completed that piece, once we have, let's say, a better understanding of each other, then we want to visit your facility, come on onto the site and actually tour the laboratory, visualize the space, as well as be able to ask questions in a, in a deeper technical manner, see things that are happening in your laboratory, and be able to say, you know what, we have a solution for this right here, or a way to envision your future state could be this. And we start to have those discussions at a very early point. We start to look at what could the future be with an Impeco solution in your laboratory. We would spend one day, two days, depending on the complexity of the project on site with you. And then we start to look at more of the specifics, right, where we come back, and we work with our design team to say, let's start creating solutions. Let's start creating layouts. 
let's start putting together a future model. And it's at that point where myself or my solutions consultant team will approach someone like Francesco to say, Francesco, we have a customer request for a connection to a certain modality or a certain discipline of testing. Is there anything that we're exploring in that space or do we have a current solution in that space? So Francesco, I'll, I'll turn it over to you at this point to kind of describe uh, for the viewing audience more about our solutions. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Tommy. As, as Tommy was saying, uh, we are selling solutions more than products. So it, it, it happens that uh, uh, we are dealing with products that we still don't have in our portfolio. Uh, these products could be composed by new analyzers still to be connected to our automation line, new specialties, or new check-in pre-analytics, post-analytical modules that, that are still not available on the market. So the first stage uh, of my uh, work, that is the second step of, of this process, is to understand internally the feasibility of uh, these solutions, these, these products, uh, um, reading through the requirements collected uh, from the customer in order to assess basically two main points. Feasibility, so yes or no, the technical feasibility, and uh, the, um, the most probable lead time, because whenever we are an R&D company, so we are developing the products that we are manufacturing and selling. And so once the feasibility uh, is confirmed, we have to start the development process. We have to test our prototypes. And finally, we release the product uh, for the serious manufacturing. This is why uh, usually I'm collecting these requirements coming from customers, from different customers. And while I am building a sort of business case in order to understand if that product uh, could be used, uh, I would say everywhere, not only in that, uh, in that situation. In the meantime, uh, uh, we are involving our project management team that together with the R&D team uh, um, is estimating uh, the I would say the effort needed to develop and release that new new product. There are two cases. So internal products, as I said, pre and post analytical modules that are designed and made by Impeco. Uh, and there is the other case that when we are speaking about analyzers, when we are speaking about analyzers interface, we have to involve IVD uh, third party manufacturers that are uh, developing and selling analyzers because we cannot develop alone an interface. We have to sign a sort of development agreement with uh, those players because during the development, uh, I would say that a lot of uh, um, information should be shared between the two products. Um, and so both of us uh, uh, should agree on the on this development to work together the two r d departments uh, should work together uh, with the same final target because most of the times uh, um, some modification is needed on both products this is why there are basically two processes for internal products and third party interfaces uh, uh, products uh, to be uh, processed and to be analyze deeply in order to assess, as I said, the feasibility and the lead time of a particular solution. So after this internal process, we are always trying to put on the table different solutions. So uh, we don't want to say for sure no to a customer. And so basically we always have two answers. The first one is yes if a product maybe it is already available they ask they are asking for a solution that could be achieved using an already existing product maybe slightly modified 
or developing a new product? And so the answer is yes. In other cases, developing a product for that purpose could be difficult or could be, as I said, uh, um, it, it would be necessary to start from agreements with third parties. So instead of saying no or to give a solution, I don't know, in one, two years, we are trying to give a sort of temporary solution in order to cover the lead time needed to release the instrument, the product, in order to avoid letting the customer, um, I would say, without that solution uh, to, to find uh, another, another, another solution, another product to cover that part of the process. So basically, uh, my final output is to put on the table, on Tommy table, different solution to be shared with the customer in order to create a sort of loop and come back to me saying, yes, no, this one is better than the other one. Let's proceed in this sense or in the other one. So, Tommy, I give you back the stage in order to show and describe how usually we are going to the customer sharing these different possibilities and to, to figure out together the, the best possible solution. Francesco, and, and just to, let's say, uh, bounce off of what Francesco just detailed, our organization is an automation organization. Laboratory automation is what we, what we focus on. And we have over 50 various analyzer connections and growing in all sorts of disciplines across laboratory testing. We are into not just chemistry immunoassay, coagulation hematology, which is fairly standard in laboratory automation, but into to let's say uh, disciplines that that are molecular, microbiology, all kinds of different disciplines in the laboratory where we have a solution. We have over 25 vendors and growing that we work with. And as, as Francesco greatly detailed, we are very flexible to customer requests. I think that's really a, a value of ours, a differentiator in the market. Uh, we're a flexible organization and we are a, a, a design and, and let's say um, engineering organization. We're able to create solutions based off of certain customer requests. And I'll give you a, a, a prime example, a, a vertical transport system where, where a customer maybe didn't have as much horizontal space to play with, but had more vertical space and had a need for transport between vertical floors. And we created a solution for that. Uh, so that's just one example of, of many and where we are working with Francesco and team. There's an inter interoperability between our manufacturing facility in Turin, in the Turin, Italy area, as well as our headquarters in Novotana, Switzerland, and our various global teams, uh, and, and most especially with me, the North America, Latin American space. So <clears throat> thank you, Francesco, for that. And just to, let's say, walk through the remaining steps in the process together. We will come back to you after consultancy with Francesco and team to say, this is our, our recommendation. This is a solution that we feel would be a, a great fit for your laboratory. And it may be multiple, it may not just be one size that fits all, right? And at that point, we start to have conversations around what makes the most sense. Uh, both from not only, let's say, a functionality standpoint, but from a budgetary standpoint. And we start to work through that together uh, until we feel comfortable on both sides that we have the best solution to set you up for the next 5, 10, 15 years of, of success in your laboratory. And we will we will go ahead and, and let's say, enter into uh, that negotiation phase where we're, we're, we're finding the, the best, let's say, cost to you, um, what makes the most sense for, for your budgetary requirements. Uh, at that point, then we, we, let's say, enter into a partnership together and moving forward, we'll align with our project management team to come in and start to create a Gantt chart, start to create a, a project plan for implementation 
and installation. And really, it's dependent upon you. It's dependent upon your current situation. Is it a green space? Are we building out in, in, inside of a new facility? Or are we having to deassemble a current existing uh, automation line and or work around current live environment in a hospital space while we're installing laboratory automation? Again, I fall back to the fact that we've been doing this for 30 over 30 years. We're very well versed in how to manage that type of project. And, and the project management team, our service team, our installation team will engage with you and we will really do our best to meet the timelines that you, you need us to meet. Um, so I think both Francesco and I have given you a very high level overview of the automation process uh, specific to the Impeco process. And I, I really want to thank everyone for taking the time to spend with us today to be able to, uh, you know, let's say be here for the inaugural uh, start of our video series. And we we plan to bring more content uh, and, and, and explore other areas of, of laboratory automation together. So Francesco, I'll turn it over to you for any parting words. Thank you, thank you, Tom. You know, no, I, I agree with you. Thank you very much to, to everyone. This was only a general overview of the process. For sure, there are other <laughs> topics to be discussed <laughs> together. So we, we, did, we, we started for, from this general overview, you know, to understand also how to approach us in the future and figure out uh, the best possible solution together. So Absolutely. thank you very much once again.